All right, welcome back, everybody. So he offers his own unconventional solutions to nation building, from sex strikes to improving service delivery to z- disease songs to curbing the spread of illness. Yeah, that's quite a variety. Uh, that's the 2013 Comics Choice Award winner for Best South African Breakthrough Act, Tatsun Konzo, whose third and most daring one-man stand-up comedy show entitled Clever Black opens at the Baxter Theatre on the 16th of June. He joins us now to unpack what Clever Black is about and what we can look forward to. You had to name a show after it. <laughs> hey, is it good that? Good morning. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> good morning to you. It's very so, good are to be you here. a clever black? I am. You are. Do you know what the funny thing about that term is that many people shy away from it. Yeah. Like in 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 my culture, it's not very popular to be referred to as clever. A clever. Like there's a difference between clever and clever. What's the difference? Are you, are you better educated? When, when you when you labeled clever, it means that you're just trying to be. You're going against the grain for the sake of going against the grain. Okay. You, you, you're questioning authority, you have your own opinion, and you're not going according to the status quo. So many people shy away from it. <laughs> I have chosen to embrace it. Oh, good. I, like Tabo Mbeki, is an African. Yes. I am a clever black. So, uh, I owe my cleverness to the rivers <laughs> and the seas. And the D's, E's, and F's <laughs> that I got for Africans. So, so our former president, Thabo Mbeki, is yes. a, he's a clever black. He's a clever not black. Not clever. He's not a clever. Okay, he's not a clever. He's a clever. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm understanding where we're going That's with it. this. That's as simple so as that. So it's as simple as that. Simple as that. So being who you are yes. and being so clever yes. has won you awards all over the world. Well, I mean, let's go back. Let's go back because we cannot start this interview without bragging right. about the fact that you won and took first place at the Montreux International Comedy Festival. I did. I mean, that's huge. I mean, you've got guys from all over the world competing for this. It was, it was a very eye-opening experience. What I found is that the world has heard comedy. Like, if you go to America, you go to New York, they know funny they know comedy yeah what they don't know is south african perspective they've never heard it it's it's usually first world if you think of any of your favorite comedians it's american uk you know maybe australia if yeah you, if you are car, um, like a carl baron fan but in terms of third world countries very few very few comedians uh, have have had their say and now, you know, Trevor Noah has literally bust the door open for people to go, who are these guys? Yeah. And for the first time, you know, the world is, is paying attention to it. Yeah, is it really? I mean, have you found that from what he's achieved, it has opened the doors? Definitely. It really when, has. When I was in Switzerland last year in Montreux, it was amazing. I remember we were, we were on a, 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 a taxi ride back uh, to the hotel with an American comic. And, uh, you know, I was asking him questions about, you know, what they do in America. Very you know, engaged and excited to hear what they do. Yeah. And he was giving me information. And then the first time he saw me on stage, he was like, yo, dude. He felt like I was bamboozling him when I was inquiring about his, his craft and, and American style because he thought I was trying to make like I didn't know anything. Yes. And when he saw me, it was like, he was like, it's like he saw a unicorn speaking. That's amazing. And he was like, wow. dude, you know exactly what you're doing. But they don't. I guess they just don't have the access. They don't realize. It's it's fantastic. I mean, I was telling you before, last night I actually went to go and see Trevor Noah's show Mm. um, at Monty. And let me tell you, it didn't disappoint. In fact, for me, it was like he'd gone up another level. And he hasn't lost touch with with South Africa because obviously he's so now integrated into into the world. I mean, this guy is now, you know, when he takes over that show, he's going to belong to the world. He's not just going to belong to South Africa. But he hasn't lost those It's roots. very exciting to hear you say that. Yeah. Because, like I said to you earlier, it means that, you know what, the standard is still high and we still have something to, to, to work towards. So yeah. it's great that... Good feeling. Well done, Trevor. Exactly. Well done, Trevor. <laughs> he's clever. Yes. No, He's definitely. not a clever. He's, he's not clever. clever. He's clever. He is. He really is. So, let's talk about you now. Yes. Because I, I just want to, I want to get to grips with um, your show. and. Right what you cover because when i read this introduction i mean my goodness me you cover up you cover so much yes. service delivery disease uh, the spread of illnesses you sound more kind of like a politician yeah. as opposed to a comedian but then again I, yeah there's a fine line you these know days. What? the <laughs> show know. is about 
it's literally going after society, South African norms, cultural norms, that we, things that we've embraced as normal culturally and actually just unpacking to say, guys, this is actually crazy. Yeah. So I talk about animal rights. I talk about world hunger. I talk about everything, ancestors. Do you know what I mean? And I break it down and I go, is this what you realize when you say you believe in this? This is what you're saying. Yeah. And, uh, and when I unpack it, I have fun doing it. And I have fun seeing the audience react to it to go, actually, you're right. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? When we, because like, for example, animal cruelty, I, I, I stay, I start by saying, do you believe in animal cruelty, right? Yeah. And people go, yes, yes, no, definitely. And uh, rhinos, you want to save the rhinos? Animal cruelty, animal cruelty. But then the moment I go, the first thing I say to people who are against animal cruelty, I say, what about mosquitoes? <laughs> what about bugs? What about all the times that you've squashed the cockroach? <laughs> Nothing has changed for the cockroach since 94. I want you to understand this. The cockroach, every human being a cockroach has come across has either been persecuted, yeah. attacked, or killed. Yes. Nothing has changed for them. No, you're but right. But people will say animal rights. But I go, yeah, but what about that thing? Yes. The ant that you... Yeah. Dead. Dead. Finished. So I, I have Give fun like, kind of unpacking... All of that kind of stuff from, like you say, ancestry to service delivery to sex strikes to women so in South you, Africa. It's you find the humor in everything. A whole lot of fun. I <laughs> love it. Well, listen, Tats, we're going to play, take a quick break. I'm awesome. going to continue having a, a chat to you after this. Stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned. Mm-hmm.